because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Welcome to another show of Modern Mystics with me and my dear brother Nicholas. I hope hello. you enjoyed our intro. I always do. And uh, say hello to Nicholas. Hi everyone. Oh, I love that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. I'm the one who made it, but I love it. I love watching it. <laughs> that's, that's a good use of a project, you know, like when you make something or like you know, you just give it over to the spirit to just work on this project with you. And then afterwards, you can't get enough of it your own project. It's like a, I don't know, a good use of a project. Um, <laughs> I was even thinking of other videos I've made. That I just, yeah, there's something about it where I think we talked about it actually during a movie night here the other night where it's like, I don't know what the right word is, but like the word that comes to mind is like pride, but it's it's like, it's not really that. It's more just like, yes, like I did something with the spirit and it feels really good. And I just love that feeling I had while working on the project. And it's like, I get to relive it over and over again. And uh, it reminds me of the shows. It's like, we're not actually doing these shows to teach anyone or for anyone else. It's really just to hear our own lesson. And uh, I remember the last show, you know, I, uh, I, I had something come up that morning and then I, I released it. And then basically the whole show was all like a, a deepening on whatever it was that I needed to learn earlier that day. It was just a deepening in that. And uh, it just felt, I just, I was just so happy. It felt so good to really reinforce whatever I needed to hear during that show and then I remember later I watched I watched the show and I was like wow that was really good <laughs> but not in a way where it's like wow I'm really good Andy is so great kind of thing it was like wow like that the Holy Spirit really reached me through exactly what I needed to hear that was like so perfect so and yeah I had this thought of like this idea of responsibility in my mind kind of like this theme and it kind of takes away the responsibility, um, like a false sense of responsibility when you realize like what it's all actually for. Like you were talking about like the video editing and in this community, we have different projects and different assignments where this whole sense, this false sense of responsibility can come up just so you can see it so you can let it go. And um, yeah, it's like, we'll have different assignments. Let's say it'll seem like, um, we have buddies in the community where you can, you're linked up with someone and every time you seem to need to express something, you can go and join with them and express something to them and um, they'll hold the space. And if anything feels inspiring in their mind to teach themselves, they'll say it. And um, yeah, it just reminds you of this show. And I think that's what you're trying to say with the whole video thing. It's like when, when spirit's doing something through you, then you can really appreciate it. It's like, without this sense of pride or arrogance or personal responsibility, it's like, oh, wow, that was beautiful because it was of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> I was like, I can't really put into words and we were actually having a little trouble. Like, like what's the word for it? And maybe we did come up with something, but I couldn't remember it. Um, but yeah, just as you were saying, like, I would also kind of rewatch some of our, our our shows and I'd have that kind of similar feeling because I was like, wow, that came out of my mouth. Like, because when I'm speaking, it's it's just like, okay, it's happening. All right, I hope it's <laughs> I hope it's good. And then just trusting it and then watching afterwards. Okay, yeah, I think it went well. 
uh, just like based off how it felt when I was speaking. And that's all I like pay attention to. It's like, okay, how do I feel as I'm speaking? It's not so much, okay, is it this word or is it that word? It's more like, okay, does it feel right or does it not? And it's this whole thing of trust and like learning of discernment. Um, just like you, you learn to seemingly trust yourself or trust your ability to allow the spirit to kind of pour through you. And actually yesterday I was working all day on uh, some weeding here. Um, we just have a big kind of property of, of lawn and just, you know, it was like our spring cleaning outside. And I just felt inspired to uh, listen to a lot of David's uh, speaker recordings of, of the section of the manual of, for teachers from a course in miracles. And because it's been so long since I had actually read that section myself. And I was just amazed by everything. I just, there was this whole new appreciation for the manual for teachers from a course in miracles. And, and actually one part that I was sharing with you, Andy, was that uh, there was a section that David read from it. Um, like, the usefulness of words or are words useful? I forget exactly how this section is called, but I was amazed that actually Jesus was saying like, yeah, you don't have to like pay attention to the words they're speaking. Just I'm paraphrasing, you know, but like, just give, give it over to me and then trust that it will come from a higher wisdom than you. That like what you need to hear, you know, you'll teach, you'll speak. You know, just it's like this development of trust. And, you know, that, yeah, it's just going to be very helpful. And I, I don't know, there's just something that felt really profound for me. Like, oh, like I can relax again, like even more so. Like spirit's got it. And that's always been our prayer for even these shows. Like, you know, all right, Jesus, you got this. <laughs> if, it's, if it's supposed to be really helpful for our mind, it, it will be. And it'll just be reflected in joy. And if not, well... <laughs> I guess it'll be healing. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed that. And and there's been this theme that I was sharing with you as well, Andy, where, yeah, it just really came up into my mind lately, this thing around, uh, like, boxes, like, like, boxed thinking. And that's what this this whole world is. Like, it's all these rules and, and ways of being and, and that's why there's all these like inspirational posts like oh follow the the path that like goes away from the crowd and and all that and it's actually been really up for me like right now uh although it's always been this healing of just really noticing lately where i have this like box thinking you know one little example is if i'm watching a movie i have to finish it i can't just stop like halfway through it's like i have to <laughs> And yet it, I might, it might not be joyful to actually finish the movie. And then it's like this, no, but I have to do it. It's, it's like this real thing until thankfully a mighty companion will be nearby or a trusted friend that I can kind of share this with. Like, yeah, I have to, I have to do this. And, and they can just be like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, where did you come up with that? <laughs> you know, just seeing actually where our thoughts and everything, I mean, there's so like really this whole world is this ridiculous thought, but, but practically what we're in touch with at each moment is what's really helpful. So like there's that, or, all right, if I get a plate of food, it's the same thing. I have to eat all of it. You know, I can't just eat part of it. Even if I feel full at a certain point, it's like, no, it's, you have to do this. And so it's just helpful having mighty companions. And it's like almost this thing of, you know, trust, you know, trusting your mighty companions to help point out, our ridiculous beliefs and thoughts, you know, just help us see that it's silly. Like that, that can be questioned, you know, it's not actually this real thing that has to be this certain way. And yeah, it's, it's actually been really profound for me because it's, I've, I've been seeing, it's like really this unconscious thing. I really feel that it's, it's real, you know, like it's just the way it is. And until someone points it out, I can't really see it for myself. It's been the same thing with that healing I had with add-ons that I think I shared maybe on the previous show, um, which actually I'm just seeing even right now. This is, it's an, it's an add-on, you know, these boxed thinking, like things have to be a certain way or, 
uh, like a marriage has to last a certain amount of time. And even then it's like, when is long enough? You know, when is relationship long enough? You know, it's, and then just seeing where it's, it's these ridiculous thoughts or beliefs, like how long or how good is a good enough mother? How good is a good enough father? How good is a good enough son? These are ridiculous thoughts. Like who can judge that? Where do we set these like guidelines up? And so it's just for us to, when we notice it, when we finally notice like, oh, wow, this is a little strange. It's like, okay, handing it over to Jesus. Help me see this differently. You know, help me forgive this. Help me release this and see this anew. Help me retranslate this in my mind to whatever can be helpful for me to get from this or to see from this. Yeah. yeah, it's like we make up all these conclusions and a lot of them are subconscious. Like we had a movie gathering last night and David was saying, you have to empty your mind of all these subconscious and unconscious beliefs and conclusions that we have made. And sometimes these conclusions, we don't even fully realize we have made them, but they're there and they're eventually going to get flushed up just so we can question them and let, and let them go. And um, yeah, I remember even... It's like going back to trust. It's like even for this show, it was like me and you, you know, we were basically hearing. <laughs> it's like we join a lot before the show and see like what kind of downloads we get from the spirit. It's like, it's like okay, what kind of themes are in the mind? Uh, what do we feel inspired to talk about? And for this show, really the only thing that came in seemingly ahead of time was the word trust. Like just that one word that we, we could both really um, hear. And uh, so, so, yeah, I was just thinking like, is it, is it trust or is it maybe we're supposed to talk about trust or it's like just trust that <laughs> it's going to go on, you know? <laughs> and even like, I know responsibility is such a huge block and it's like, am I really responsible personally for a show to come up with the words of what I'm going to say to hold up some kind of show for like an audience. And, and yeah, it's like, yeah, my prayer is to really see my real responsibility, not all these false sense of responsibilities because, you know, I heard David say, it's like, we're not responsible for bodies. We're not responsible for people. We're not responsible for anything in this world. We're only responsible for our state of mind. Like everything else is just a false sense of responsibility. And that's what we have to let go of. Because if we don't let go of that, then how are we supposed to remember that we're dreaming? Like the shirt that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> He's going to zoom out a little bit. But yeah, I, I ended up buying the shirt, which is great. It was like, it was, it was hidden in a little... uh in my dresser i guess you know maybe i didn't want to remember but now i do so i, I that's why i found it and <laughs> and so yeah it's like if we have this sense of responsibility that we're responsible for anything in the world responsible for anything that the body does then we're never going to remember that we're dreaming mm. and um yeah even for pets family everything is just will fully be taken care of by the spirit if we just let go of this false sense of responsibility. Mm. Like I remember um, when I was in high school, I had early high school, I had this inspiration to really get this certain type of cat for whatever reason, a Berman cat, B-I-R. And, and I just thought they were so beautiful and I just felt inspired. So I looked up some um, cat breeders and I sent some emails to different one, ones of them and um, I never heard back and then uh, fast forward like two years I'm studying the course and all of a sudden I get this email back from one of the breeders I had emailed like two years ago and he's like hey Andy uh, I saw your email <laughs> two years later about that you really want a Berman cat I have one available uh, her name's Misty and he said <laughs> He sent me these pictures and they were like the ugliest pictures I've ever seen of a cat, of a kitten. Like, you know, kittens are typically supposed to be really beautiful. And I was like, yeah, these are some pretty ugly pictures. But it was funny because even though I thought like, yeah, it doesn't, 
there's no way like they come up to my standard of like what a kitten should look like I still felt this like deep resonance it's like I'm supposed to get this cat like I didn't know why and so um and it was like a three and a half hour drive the cat was like fifteen hundred dollars like everything was like like absurd basically but at the same time I I had this trust that it's like if I'm following my inspiration that's what the Holy Spirit's guidance is and that's what I'm supposed to do so I phoned up one of my friends at the time and even my parents didn't want me to get a cat so it's like all the things in form was seemingly against what my inspiration was but I knew I had to go for it because I just felt the spark so I call up one of my friends my mighty companion at the time Sushin and um, he's like a closet mystic but he was like my mighty companion at the time we always joined. And so I asked him, I was like, Hey, do you want to go with me to drive four hours to get a really expensive kid? And, uh, and my parents don't want me to get one, but I feel this inspiration. You want to go for it? And he's like, yeah. And he, he loved those kind of spontaneous adventures. So next thing you know, we're driving. Yeah. Four hours. And, and I, I think along the way, I just kept having this doubt. I was like, what am I doing? like you know it's like this is just ridiculous like I've never had a cat or dog um you know it's like my parents don't want one it's like all these kind of like doubts and I kind of expressed them to my friend and he was just like it was so beautiful beautiful reflection he was like it's all good it's all good like just keep going and so we just keep driving and we finally get to the house and uh knock on the door and this this man o opens the door and he's just so joyful and jolly and he's like hi and he has this like cute little shirt with like a cat on it um <laughs> Bermans Bermans or something you know was, and then <laughs> and then he was like so happy to see us and we walk in and I see the kitten but it ha looks nothing like the pictures <laughs> it was like glowing and white light I was like I was like my jaw dropped I was like whoa like it was just yeah, I couldn't believe it. Basically, it was like angelic or something. And and then I was like, and it was like the most beautiful kitten I had ever seen in my entire life. So <laughs> it's funny, I guess spirit had to have that guy send me these terrible pictures in my perception, just so I could trust that I'm not doing this based on form, you know, I'm doing it based on inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so I show up there. And then, yeah, and everything was just completely flipped, like, so beautiful. The cat was actually so beautiful, even in my perception and glowing in white light and everything. And and uh, we brought the cat back and, yeah, the cat had a really holy assignment. You know, it had, it was a huge flusher, a lot of, um, it just helped me see a lot of things like this belief in rejection, you know if the cat seemingly reflected like I don't love you or whatever, it would bring things up, anger, rage, everything. I and remember that. Beautiful I remember. assignment. Yeah. And eventually um, I felt guided to leave the house to go to community. And there was this responsibility thought for the cat and responsibility thought for my family, because at the time I was doing this business and I always told them, you know, I'm going to make millions of dollars. I'm going to buy you guys nice houses and made all these promises probably out of guilt and so I had that responsibility in my mind like okay the cat what about the family is everything going to be taken care of like I need to trust that I can follow this inspiration and go where the Holy Spirit wants me to go and what happened was you know the Holy Spirit's really practical all we really have to do is pray and listen and follow and the Holy Spirit's like the cat is your sister's assignment now. I was like, okay, great. So I told my sister and yeah, she felt it too. And, and, um, and so the cat was left with her and, and with my family, I still felt this guilt. Like I didn't live up to my promise. I quit my business before it was successful. How can I trust that you'll take care of them? And then I made this prayer, like Holy spirit, like, please take care of my family mm -hmm. and everyone basically. And yeah, so going back to remembering, you're not responsible for family, pets, people, anything in the world. And so I left. And then my sister actually was recently starting the course. Actually, I think she started the course around that same time 
where the cat was handed over. And um, <laughs> so it was a new assignment. And then once I was in community, one day my sister sent me a message. She's like, I'm really concerned about the cat. Um, she's like throwing up. She seems sick, diarrhea. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm really scared, worried. And I was like, you know, I, I prayed on it. I was like, okay, let's see. What what would I say to myself, basically? What, like, I would always teach what I would learn. And I started typing and I was like, remember that this cat was sent by the Holy Spirit. You know, I was guided to get this cat. This cat has a very holy assignment. First with me, then it got maximized. And now with you. So since the cat is your assignment, remember it's going she's going to be a reflection of your mind because she was a reflection of my mind when i was assigned to the cat now it's yours so she's going to be a reflection of your mind if you still believe in sickness if you still have these responsibility thoughts or anything like that the cat's just going to reflect it and um and yeah i, I said it just like that and she was reading the course so she actually understood what i was saying and mm. all of a sudden she went from being so like nervous fearful and concerned to so happy she was like wow like thank you like she was so happy and that same day i saw on instagram she put two pictures up like with her and the sun and like she put like this caption like into the light or something like that and i'd never seen her post any pictures like well, that before so that was just like a beautiful symbol in my mind and then with the family thing, with the whole business and money concerns and all that, it was like me and my dad were both working on this real estate investing business and neither one of us were doing that great while I was living there. And we were kind of, it was like a collaboration at times, but it was mostly I was doing the business and then he was also doing it. Same business, but not so much of a collaboration. Like we'd come together, share thoughts and stuff. But yeah, neither of us were successful in it. And then, um, and then once I left, I made that prayer, like, listen, Holy Spirit, please take care of them. Mm -hmm. And then it was so funny, like two, three months later, while I'm in community, my dad lands like the biggest real estate deal of his career. And it never happened while I was there, like $60,000 net profit, you know, like those were like numbers that I always dreamed that we would be getting. And, and yeah, the Holy Spirit came through, you know, <laughs> parents, family taken care of, cat taken care of, sister taken care of, no responsibility whatsoever for Andy as a person to do anything. All I was doing ever was following my inspiration and everything was completely taken care of because of that trust. And that's why I feel like trust is so important. Mm. <sighs> Yeah, I was just hearing my mind because that's, that's an amazing parable. I was hearing like, yeah, all the spirits ever asking us to do is is trust that like one next step. It's like just take this one step, put all your focus on this one step because the mind and the ego kind of takes over by spitting out this huge like linear time horizontal thing okay well if you take this step what about the step after that and the step after that you're like where's this gonna go you're gonna end up homeless you know it's like it just spins out this whole thing when the spirit's like whoa whoa <laughs> take it one step <laughs> i'm just saying you know do this one little thing and then we'll see it's like it's like it's not even and then it's just like just take this step do only that you know because everything else is just a distraction. The ego is just right there trying to get us to freak out, really. It's like this little, like, prankster kid who's just, like, trying to distract us, like, you know, just prank us all the time. And and I was also hearing in my mind just that, yeah, like, it, in innocence, really, it's not, like, to feel guilty about, but it's just, I'm just saying it's arrogant that we think, you know, it's like, oh, if it's not for me, everyone's screwed. You know, if I don't do this, then, you know, the whole world's going to fall apart, which is really how it feels. You know, there is a, yeah, there is a recent example of some baby birds here. <laughs> I won't go into like the details of it, but there was like this deep healing for a mighty companion here. And it was just, we were just looking at it together where it was just like, wow, it's like, there's really this feeling like if, if, you know, we don't do something, 
it's screwed. Like it's nothing's good's going to happen. And it's the same thing. But then I could just, I just was starting to hear in my mind, like, if that's true, if that were to be true, that means every single thing in the planet cosmos I'm responsible for. That means like, I have to make sure the sun spins at a right degree. I have to make sure every single child in Africa, every ant, every, it's like everything. It's, it's really, it's always all or nothing. It's, it's either we're responsible for every single detail of this universe or we're responsible for none of it. And we're actually only responsible for our state of mind. Really, that's what like even quantum physics and like Susan's been sharing in her show. It's, it's this belief there's this like subject object split, but really it's, it's all like one mind. Like that's what it means. If it's all my mind, it's really like this all or nothing. And and I feel like that's a helpful context, you know, even though it's a bit extreme, it's like, okay, just pull it back. My only responsibility is my state of mind. Even Jesus is saying like, you are not responsible for the world you made, or you are not responsible for the error. Your only responsibility is to accept the correction so that you can feel at peace again, not for anything else, not because you need to do it right. You know, it's like, there was even that thought earlier, like, how good is a good enough spiritual student? Like, when will, how many, like, mystical experiences or how many peaceful moments do you, it's like, no, it's like, it's in the moment. Like, if you're feeling at peace, like, that's it. That's the goal. Present peace is the goal. Not even, like, mystical experiences. Like, that's our, all our whole backdrop here. It's using everything for present peace. Like these projects, when upsets come up, it's like, it's not like for this long range goal. It's like, it's really for right now. Do you feel peaceful? Do you feel at joy? You know, remember what it's all for. Remember what any of what you do for. Remember what every encounter is for. Trust that the spirit's right there with you. And it's a holy encounter. You know, remember every encounter is a holy encounter. (laughs) If, if used properly. Yeah. Yeah. And you can trust that your only responsibility is your state of mind. And I love that, that quote in the course, trust would settle every problem now. So thank you guys. And it's about time now, but we do have an online retreat about trust in two weeks. So we'll probably talk more about that, but our next show, I think will be in three weeks if we have a next show where very spontaneous so thank you guys for joining us and you can watch a recording on youtube on the living miracles channel of all the shows today so thank you for joining us yeah thank you everyone thank you andy it's always fun